This is not a, a crisis of honesty because we, look, Jesus was the truth. They killed him. If he came back Thursday, on Thursday, they'd kill him. They kill, the world kills the truth. That is part of what the world does. But this is a crisis of class. This is because we're only getting one point of view from one class. And class in America is fluid, but it's not non-existent, right? You can work your way, this, you can't really do this in England. If you work your way, even today, if you work your way up from nothing, you'll always be a little bit, there'll always be somebody to make a comment about where you came from. In America, truly, nobody gives a damn. Nobody cares what your background was if now you are part of, uh, Great word, the clerisy. This is a word from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, one of the great poets, one of the greatest intellectuals who ever lived. He had this word, the clerisy. It is, it's obviously sounds like the clergy. It comes from the same root as the clergy, but it means the intellectual elite who set the rules and set the social comments of what, of what is. Now, the thing is, America, this class is fluid. You can move around in America, which is great, but it's not non-existent. And there are rules for entry. There are rules for entry. There are ways you behave. There are things you believe. There are ways you dress, places you go, schools you've been to. All these things make you part of the clerisy. And there's a certain amount of money you probably have to have, or at least a certain amount of influence. And this means that they set the rules about what is polite and not polite to say and what is outside what they call the Overton window, the acceptable uh, kind of, the acceptable subjects of conversation. And what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a press that was once working class. It, uh, the press used to be something, say back in the 30s, that a guy who was smart but didn't go to college but had a lot of life experience might be, end up a reporter. Today, you go to college, you've got to go get a journalism degree, you become part of the clerisy, and you're hired by the people who are the clerisy. You're hired by corporations and you have to believe what everybody else believes essentially there are things you can say and things you don't you're just not going to say i mean this is the way that the, the uh, left has worked forever they have worked through good manners you know good manners are far far more important uh you know the rules of good manners are far far more important than even being shouted at people can stand being shouted at they can even stand being martyred but being excluded being sniffed at being told that no 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 you're not welcome at this dinner table because you don't say the right things you know i i, I told you the story before but it's worth repeating i was at a party with a bunch of people young people from the new york times all of whom had been silenced in one way or another for having wrong think at the new york times they were told either get out or no you can't say this no you can't do this all of them and i said to them why don't you come to the daily wire we would love you. We would, you know, you can say, even though you're liberal, you know, some of them were liberal, some of them were conservative. But I said, you know, we have a range of opinions at the Daily Wire. Why don't you come write for us? We have a great circulation. People come and listen to it. And they all said the same thing because you're not the clerisy. They didn't use that word, but they said, you're not talking to the people who matter. And the people who matter are not the people with power. They're the people who set the social rules. You can have a lot of power and not matter. You can have a lot of money and not matter. You can have a lot of reach, you can have a big audience, and not matter if you're not part of the clerisy, and that's what we're dealing with. Let me show you how this works, though. CNN broke a story, leaked documents from the Hubei Provincial Center in China for disease control and prevention in China. Came out in the documents, which cover, and I'm reading from CNN, which cover an incomplete period between October 20, 2019 and April this year, reveal what appears to be an inflexible healthcare system constrained by top down bureaucracy and rigid procedures that were ill equipped to deal with the pandemic, right? At several critical moments in the early phase of the pandemic, the documents show evidence of clear missteps. Suddenly, CNN has discovered that more people died. More people were dying in China than China would say. Now, we told you that on the show because we give you tomorrow's news today, but we couldn't prove it. Now, CNN has proved it. So I want to give credit, full credit to a guy at the uh, Federalist, a guy named Tristan Justice, because I'm going to use some clips from his story. First of all, he's got a great name, Tristan Justice. I, I, I may change my name to Tristan Justice. That, that is an absolutely terrific name. Tristan Justice, private eye. I mean, you could be anything with the name Tristan Justice. However, he's a writer at The Federalist, and he wrote a story called CNN Finally Discovers China Uses New U.S. Media to Attack the United States. He says, for months, it's been brazenly obvious that China was deliberately underreporting its cases of the Wuhan virus. The Chinese government lied about every aspect 
of the global crisis, including its origin, while silencing whistleblowers who sounded the alarm, hiding crucial information from health experts, and pushing the World Health Organization into line about the nature of the virus itself. At the pandemic's outset, onset, China again proved it cannot be trusted with its own statistics. They came out, I think it was in April, uh, April 7th. This was what Reuters was reporting from China uh, in, in April about the virus. This is cut four. China marked a massive milestone on Tuesday. It's seen no new deaths as a result of the new coronavirus. Mainland China also reported a drop in new cases after closing its borders to virtually all foreigners. In the central city of Wuhan, once the epicenter of the outbreak, lockdown measures are finally easing. It's due to allow people to leave the city via road, rail and air on Wednesday. And more non-essential businesses will open their doors once again providing the first glimpse of what life could be like after at least two months indoors. Wuhan has reported only two new confirmed cases in the last 14 days. Overall, China had around 32 new confirmed cases of the coronavirus on Monday, all of which involved travellers arriving from overseas. <laughs> Everything is great. Everything is great in China. You remember Thomas Friedman in Knucklehead Row at the New York Times, the op-ed page of the New York Times, said, oh, if only for one day, if only we could have a powerful government, like an authoritarian government like China, oh, we could fix so many things. And the logic behind that is his class, the clerisy, knows how to fix things and is being held up by us, the rabble, with our power in democracy. But I want to show you, I want to show you what happened to this story as this China story developed, as it de developed falsely among the clerisy, namely the press. I'm going to read again from this Federalist paper by Tristan Justice, with the great name. U.S. reports uh, uh, 1,200 coronavirus deaths in over 24 hours, NBC News tweeted on April 7th. Meanwhile, in China, where the pandemic broke out, not a single new coronavirus death was reported. Justice says these falsehoods from China were used by corporate media as a cudgel against Trump, incredibly claiming that a communist country was doing better than the freest country in the world based on taking China's doctored numbers at face value. Here is a reporter challenging Trump on the way he refers to the virus. This is cut five. China and others have criticized you for using the phrase uh, Chinese virus. Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you going to continue using that phrase? Well, China uh, was putting out information which was false that our military gave this to them. That was false. And uh, rather than having an argument, I said, uh, I have to call it where it came from. It did come from China. So I think it's a very accurate term. But no, I didn't appreciate the fact that China was saying that our military gave it to them. Our military did not give give it to anybody. Critics say using our phrase creates a stigma. Um, no, I don't think so. No, I think saying that our military gave it to them creates a stigma. I, I just want to deconstruct that exchange for just a minute. I mean, I think it's important that the press is saying to Trump, the, the reporter is saying to Trump, you have violated the rules of the of upper class etiquette, which are set by the clerisy. See, this is what you have to remember. The rules of social behavior are set by the social upper classes. You have violated those rules. And Trump is saying, first of all, I'm telling the truth. And second of all, they did all these bad things, so screw them. That's basically what he's saying. And the reporter sticks with his values, which are values of etiquette set by the clerisy. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the rules of behavior. We're not dealing with suddenly everybody in the press became dishonest. Everybody's always dishonest. That's why it's so hard to find the truth. That's why it's so hard to speak the truth. That is why it's so hard. It, it, you will lose your job. You will lose money. You'll lose fame. You'll lose all the things that you value in life if you speak the truth. That is the Christian method, message. That is the central, one of the central messages of the gospel. That's why I always laugh when churches say, we're trying to make the world a better place. Jesus never said that. He said, the world is going to hate you. The world is going to crucify you. Pick up the cross. Follow me. Here we go. That's what he said because he knows the world, what the world does to the truth. And that is why we have to search so hard for the truth. And that's why it's so hard to speak the truth. What they are telling you is their etiquette forbids the truth. Now, see, the thing is, etiquette always has an element of hypocrisy to it, right? I, you know, if I'm sitting at a dinner table and someone is saying, uh, and someone is saying, you know, 
Uh, I've actually been in this situation. Someone's saying, oh, I've decided to have a child out of wedlock, you know, because I just, I'm just tired of not having a child and I want a child. I don't turn to her at the dinner table and say, that's a terrible thing to do. <laughs> you know, it's just not polite. So what the, what the left has done is they have infested that upper class with rules that make it impolite to speak any kind of truth at any time. Anytime you speak the truth, you are a racist, you're a sexist, you're a horrible person. You may even sink so low to be Donald Trump. Here is the press now. So you heard, you heard that exchange with Trump as they scored him for telling the truth but not following social etiquette. Here's the press piling on. This is cut six. You're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump Co., calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. Concern is growing this morning over an outbreak of a new SARS-like virus in China. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan virus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. What more can you tell us about the similarities or differences between SARS and the Wuhan coronavirus? The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus in China. The Wuhan uh, coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. From the Wuhan uh, coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus. Fears continue to grow over the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. We have new information about how the Wuhan coronavirus is spread. See, this is the thing. The rules change, right? It's not just if you follow the rules that you are in the upper class, you're in the clerisy. It's if you're in the clerisy, the way you say it are the rules. Donald Trump is not in the clerisy. It doesn't matter that he's a billionaire. It doesn't matter that he's a successful guy. The way he behaves, and the, and the things he believes, really, the things he believes, exempt him from being in the upper class. And so anything he does, the rules suddenly change. Suddenly you're not doing the right thing because you're not one of us. Yeah.